This is the Next Level Loan Officers Podcast. To learn more about Next Level Loan Officers, go to becomenl.com. Hey, this is Frazier with Lead Pops and Next Level, and I'm proud to present this episode of the Next Level Loan Officers Podcast. Lead Pops is the industry's only future proof growth solution. You can check us out at leadpops.com. Well, welcome, welcome back to the next Next Level Loan Officers Podcast. Uh, coach and founder Kellen Vaughn here with you today. And uh, listen, uh, welcome and glad you guys are listening to us, uh, loan officers that are out there. If you're not a part of our Next Level community, come check us out over at becomenl.com. Again, becomenl.com. And today, you know, we don't get a chance very often to bring on uh, a lot of our members and have them share their personal victories. But uh, listen, we've got, according to our uh, the name placard here, we've got Miami's favorite lender uh yeah there he is a good buddy of mine guy that's been in our group for a long time great contributor uh carlos carlos man welcome welcome to the podcast brother thank you thank you thank you so much for having me um it's truly an honor i mean my my friends and my family they're they're dying to watch this they're like i want to be there i want to see it's like it's kind of like a mama i made it moment you know so it's super cool i uh you know, I watch all the podcasts all the time, so just super grateful to, to be here, and, and thank you guys for reaching out to me. Well, absolutely. So, uh, listen, you know, we track a lot of the accomplishments and things that happen, you know, with our members, and, uh, and man, you, you know, you for years have been just rock solid, like very steady performer, always, you know, engaging and coming to the masterminds and things like that, and it's really, I've seen a lot of growth in you, and it's really paid off. Um, but I'll tell you the thing that stuck out to us and the reason we wanted to do this podcast is that I know at the end of last year um, or, or maybe in the beginning of this year, you got a big award from your company for your performance. And dude, in a market like 2022, where a lot of loan officers, man, they hung up, they hung up their hats and they were like, you know, I'm out of the business. I'm not going to do this anymore. Tough year. Uh, you still just just rallied with 26 million uh, 72 units out in your market, dude, that's, that's really phenomenal. That's well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and that's, a, that's not a small feat. And and of course, you know, we always talk about, listen, man, there's, there's uh, lenders who do huge numbers and there's guys that do small, but the average loan officer is doing at best in this market, two to three units a month. And so for you to come in with 72, 26 million is really, a really uh, an amazing feat. Uh, and I know it wasn't easy and I know you worked very hard to get there. And so I think for those who are listening, right? So we've got a lot of loan officers listening to the podcast. They're nervous. They're scared, right? Yeah. It's, it's a tough year. 2023 yeah. we're hoping is going to be better than 22, but nobody's really for sure. Right. So what would you say, man, like if you had to kind of just throw down like a couple of tips or things that you did specifically last year to maintain that business, to get it kind of where it is, like give us a give us a nugget of something you focus on in your business. So I think that for me to do that, I have to take it back to the inception because I feel like that, you know, played a, a huge role in, in where I am today. So I started in uh, 2018, I started assisting and um, I think I got one loan that year, but by 2019 in January, I already had like some deals in the pipeline and the one nugget, I guess, or like what I would like to focus on, if anything, which is at the top of the keys to success. And I know it gets beat up a lot is social media. Okay. Um, I get it. It might not be for everybody, but as far as my upbringing in this business that's that's what i attribute a lot of it um before i had you know i guess an advantage because i came from the marketing world you know i was mm -hmm. doing uh, instagram pages and social media or marketing for for companies because it's what i like like to be creative and then when i got into the to the company i guess at that time loan officers weren't really you know social media famous they weren't really right. so I didn't have enough business of my own or no business. So I would lock myself in the room and film videos and videos and videos and videos. So I, I'm, I'm pretty much like the example of fake it till you make it. Got it. You know, I would target the realtor, send them a, a custom message like, hey, I'm available this weekend. 
even if when I got the pre-approval, I had to hand it to the senior loan officer because I wouldn't know what to do with it. But I guess just that made it like a snowball effect. And in my first year, you know, I, I, I you know, I rocked it, you know, for, for being a rookie. So I, I think social media is, is something that got me here. And then going back to last year, is something that I never really stopped doing, you know, so. That's, so that's, let me ask this question because I think you're right. And, and you said you kind of started this with, you know, I know uh, you were a little hesitant, like, oh, I know it's social media. Right. But let me tell you, man, like there are so many loan officers out there that have really even yet to still get on this bandwagon. Right. Yeah. Like there's still we in fact, we were at a conference recently. We were talking about social media and uh, it, it was really surprising how few loan officers in the market were really engaging with this. And and basically, so I kind of came up with this and maybe you'll agree. It's like I would say consistently doing social media will outwin perfection every time. And I think that's the challenge for a lot of loan officers. They're just waiting for the right moment. Oh, I got to I got to get the right camera. I got to look the right way. I got to get the right content. And right. my whole point is just do it. Just do yeah. some doing something yeah. consistently will be better than waiting for perfection. Would you agree with that? One hundred percent. I mean, to that point, it's almost like calling a lead one time and not following up. So mm. what good is it going to do if we make one video and then nobody sees you again? I think I don't know if it's a stat that you guys pulled out. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is on, on one of your uh, you know, trainings that it's basically like the, the realtor has to see you, I think like nine times or something like that before they even consider you. So that's pretty much it. And, and, and I get it uh, again, like I said, I come, I came from marketing. So I, and back then there wasn't that much content. So I was like talking about FHA and like, now I'm doing like, kind of like funny type of things to intertwine the, but back then there was, there was none of that. So I get it. It could be scary. But like you said, you, you you just have to do it or find a different kind of way to to get it. But as far as how I did it, it it's basically like that. And and I didn't stop. And then, you know, with the direct messages, you go in and like, let's meet and this, how funny. And, and that's it, you know. And, and would you say that this strategy is primarily a driver for you to get referral partners or for new leads and ultimately applications? referral partners so at least in my market down here in south florida that's like 99 percent. so and that's the way i was kind of brought up and raised in, in the industry we don't really go after clients and this is just you know what, what i was taught it, it might not be for everyone but and because i've witnessed it the the buyer at first doesn't really want to speak to the bank and want to get called by the bank you know they want to go see the house and then that's how we redirect right. it yeah. So most of my followings and followers are going to be realtors. So I'll provide things for them. And, and of course, if I get, I, I probably get like two or three clients from social media in a whole year. Okay. Where I could do that for referral partners in a month, you know? Absolutely. Well, and I think, I think if you're talking to most loan officers out there right now, their goal would be, well, how do I go get the next referral partner? Because right. to your point, that referral partner could feed two or three deals a month. Exactly. And, you, and it's just a compounding effect. Now, you right. said something interesting also, which is um, something that we talk about a lot, which is taking that online offline, right? Mm -hmm. How do you then convert? So somebody uh, you know, engages on your social media, they comment, they like it, they share it, they do whatever. How do you ultimately kind of turn that into a new relationship? A lot of following up. Mm -hmm. So one thing for all those people listening, like you, you, you can't give up, you cannot get discouraged. You could be left on red, you could be canceled on. Like I just learned the hard way. And I always show an example. I have this realtor that, that, that we've been working now for, for a couple of years but i'm not exaggerating when i tell you it took a year and a half of direct messaging like every weekend so there's an extreme like that and there's also one where you just look at their page again sip something simple as like a dog or oh a shit to this that i'm gonna be at the park or you know you, you kind of have to find also maybe like a need or something that they're hurting on mm. and 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 just you know just keep the communication going and then one day hey you want to stop by the office you know i make some coffee i see you drinking coffee like let me make you like a real nice you know well, down here it's cafecito you know it's the cuban coffee right. um and 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 nine times out of ten once you become like friendly with them they're gonna come through yeah. you know if, if you don't just hit them with like 
hi, I do loans, uh, you know, like, right. you, know, you got to make a friend and make a fortune. You yeah. Know? You know what? We talk about that all the time. The The loan officer with the most friends makes the most money. I right? saw it. It's actually on the, uh, on the, on the power book. Thing. Oh yeah. Power 90 book. Yep. And I, <laughs> and I just started it. And look, I'm not even lying. You see? There I you go. It. That's it. Yeah. I, it. I was like, damn. So, That's it. That's right. So, yeah. And the, for those of you that are listening to this, uh, Carlos was showing our Power 90 book. Check us out on YouTube. You can watch this video. You can see us uh, here live and in person. But so, okay. So last question here uh, as it pertains to social media. So you mentioned that your content has changed a little bit, right? You were originally kind of FHA, maybe talking guidelines and things like that. Now, maybe a little more relaxed. What do you find? What content resonates the best with these referral partners what do you find they respond to most most likely? i think i i think it's kind of like what they're watching you know kind of like the trendy stuff like uh so I, i've done a few kind of like voiceovers i did one yesterday of like michael scott in the office which in the episode meant something and then i just took it and i just captioned it like conversations with the underwriter and then like it hits and so i think it's not really to to get a deal from that one post. But what does feel good is that, and I'm not trying to, you know, brag or boast, but like wherever I go, they're like, hey, yo, oh, from social media, right? Oh, I follow you guys. And like, and like people recognize you like that. So just that, like you said, is like compounding, it's snowball. Yeah. Like as long as you put in the work, you're, you're gonna receive, you know? So um, I think the message has, has shifted like that. So that's kind of the content. Um, I feel like if I were just to like stand on the camera and, you know, again, guidelines and things like that, I'll, I'll get scrolled down quick. But if I make it kind of more entertaining, um, then, then it's fine. You know, I, I think you could have like a, a, a mix of, of both, uh, but that's kind of like where I'm at right now. Just more comedic, more funny. It, again, I don't think it matters so much the message, just much more the presence. That's right. The consistency. Right. Do you, are you, uh, taking, would you say you're taking in the footsteps of Kenneth Travis and his TikTok? uh legacy as well for sure uh i i i either create it on tiktok and then i put it on instagram i haven't really been yeah. putting too much on on tiktok but okay um, but definitely i mean most of the trends and all that stuff do come from there so yeah uh like another thing if you don't know where to start just like so i'm, I'm training like a new loan officer and i was like he's like oh what, what should i go for the week i'm like find some content that you want to reproduce or make get in the room and do it so like i said today you know, compared to back then, there's so much content that you could just scroll, find, I like this, I like that, and then, and then just either create it, recreate it, put a, put a mix on it, um, and, you know, it's just, it's easier now. Yeah. You just gotta do it. Dude, I love that. You make it look easy. So what, so, all right, so for all the people out there listening, what's your, you want to drop your Instagram handle, and we'll see if they want to follow you for some inspiration. Miami's favorite lender. Miami's favorite lender. You're you're my favorite lender in Miami, thank Carlos. You, All you, right. You. So you touched on social media. Give me one other uh, hot hit, something that for you, uh, again, you know, for those of you tuning in, man, we're we're talking to Carlos. Twenty six million bucks last year, dude. That's a that's crazy. So social media was a big one. What's another big pillar for you in uh, your success? If I'm being completely honest. It's my team. Okay. My support, my background. Um, I, I, I really couldn't do it without them. I, uh, you know, I, I consider myself kind of like a stern leader, if you will, kind of, you know, like that, but, but it works and, and the people that have stuck with me have made it and, you know, they're going to go on to do great things. Um, so just a lot of training, teaching, and then delegating and, and, and I, that's what I attribute, you know, yeah. uh, like you said, either more or just as equal as, as the whole social media thing. I think that's, that's, you know, super important. Um, social media got me to have a team. So I understand maybe if you're listening to this and you might be thinking, well, I don't have enough to get a team. That's yep. fine. But once you do all the other things, you know, actions that matter, you'll, you want to get there. And when you do, I feel like I was blessed and, and lucky enough to, to pinpoint and find the right people that, that really took it over the edge, you know, cause it's something you guys talk about a lot. It's, you know, the whole, um, what is it? Divide and conquer, right? Like yeah. we're not supposed to do it all. Um, that's right. And that's another like key message, like as loan officers, especially when you start, there's like, you know, the, the, the famous kind of saying, like uh, afraid of letting go, right? Like we don't want somebody to do this or we don't want, but the sooner you understand that you're going to have to and to train people like how you would do it, things are going to go a lot easier and smoother. Yeah. And it's just an extension of yourself. 
which is what I feel luckily or, you know, with, with hard work that I was able to, to accomplish. So hands down, you know, I, those numbers are 100% because of the team. Well, and that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, you bring up a great point with the divide and conquer. And again, a big cornerstone of our belief here is that the industry will tell you the loan officer has to do everything right. And that's right. that's simply not true. Now, to your point, you implemented some key things early on social media consistency to drive the traffic to then to then get you to have a team, you know, where you are today. Right. So talk uh, just for a minute, kind of describe and just at a high level, some of the key positions on your team um, that help you achieve those results? So the way that, that I did it, which was again, passed down to me or the way that I saw it be uh, done was we would have, uh, I guess the first one was the LOA, right? The, the loan partner in the front to help with all the incoming documents, the, the pre-approvals, have somebody enter the data and encompass, um, kind of those tasks. And then I could, you know, be more outbound getting the calls or, or if I have enough, you know, we split it. Okay. Three people with me, three people with you. We'll just get back together and, and we figure it out. Um, so that was the, the first one. And then when, you know, things took off after that, then we hired a, a junior processor. So my team would get, consist of, uh, of someone in the front and someone in the back, meaning that once we get the contract, my, my team member in the back takes it, you know, from, from start to finish, obviously communicating with the processor, because, you know, neither myself or the person that I hired in the front was going to, you know, chase conditions because we're, we're sales, we're in the front. So right. that's how that's how I set it up. And, and, and it worked, you know, phenomenally, to be honest. Yeah, that, that's great. And and so and you're with uh, what company are you with? PRMG. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yep. I didn't. I, I was pretty sure about that, but I didn't want to give credit to somebody no, else okay. for your success. Uh, so you're with PRMG. You've got an amazing team down there in Miami. How many people are on your team specifically? Specifically three. It's, okay. It's, yeah. Yeah. And, and they just support your business and maybe right. if you, yeah, gotcha. Right. So, uh, man, that do that is a phenomenal, like, uh, you know, what a testament. So give us an outlook real quick. Obviously we're, we're, uh, 25 days as of the date of this podcast into 2023, you know, and again, I think as you and I were kind of talking before, it's like, there's a lot of, uh, scared loan officers, like, let's just be honest out there in the marketplace and they're concerned about interest rates. They're concerned about inventory. Um, but what do you think, man? What are, what are you, what are you doing this year to ensure that 2023 is going to be as good, if not better, than the year before. Block out the noise. Mm. Just if you're a loan officer and you're worried about the interest rates or the inventory, like that's not your worry. You know, let the economists handle that. Like you go in, you work, and you do. So my model for my team is like take like work like if we were in 2019. When things yep. weren't easy, when we we're beating up the phone, when we we're doing this, when we we're like harassing people to go to lunch and and, and things like that. Like so. That's I'm I'm gonna admit, you know, I I I fell victim to it too. Last quarter, you know, it's like doom, nobody wants to buy, nobody this and that. And and and, and I'll admit it, you know, I fell off for sure. My the motivation was down, but but that's it. You gotta pick yourself back up and and, and just block out the noise. If you wanna be a loan officer, if this is your passion, if you like it, then go for it. Kind of like tunnel vision and just work, make videos, call people, they're gonna answer send docs, try to, you know, socialize, do something, but just, you know, rule out the noise and, and, and that's it. Just, just get it. You know, that's a great point. In fact, I was, I was talking to my team yesterday and they were all a little down, you know, numbers are not what they want. Sure. And I said, listen, gang, every day we have to move the football down the field, right? We don't have to go score a touchdown. We don't have to throw an amazing Hail Mary. We just have to move the ball. So we have a lot of things that we're working on. We have a lot of things that we want to do. We have new relationships that we want to build. And we have to we have to move that ball forward every single day. As hard as it is, as sometimes as tiring as it is, as right. defeating as it is sometimes, it doesn't matter. We go, we move, keep moving forward. I think you're 100% right. I think you got to get tunnel vision. And you got to just focus on what matters. And, you know, a big part of that is just maintaining your – um, your actions that matter and that you're focused on going out there and driving new business. Everything else will take care of itself. If you focus on driving new business, then, uh, then you, you can win in this market for sure. I agree. I agree. Dude, Carlos, man, 
thank you so much for being no, on you here. Guys, like, you you, what an awesome contributor you are to our group. We thank love you, having you. You've been around for uh, a couple of minutes with us, and uh, and we've had some great times uh, masterminding at events um, over the years. So always a pleasure. Congrats on your success you. from last thank year. You. And listen, if you're a loan officer and you're out there and you're listening to Carlos and you're like, I want to be that guy, <clears throat> I want to be Miami's favorite lender. Well, then come check us out over at Next Level, becomenl.com, sign up and listen, you can uh, learn from the same folks that Carlos picked up a lot of his tactics from. We've got all the trainings and everything done and in there. And uh, maybe you'll be lucky enough to rub elbows with Carlos at our next event. So thank you again, Carlos. Thanks thank everybody so for much, listening. Thank we'll you, see everybody. you on the next podcast. For sure. Thank you everyone for listening to this episode of the Next Level Loan Officers Podcast. This is Frazier with Next Level, and I wanted to take this opportunity to invite you to extend this podcast experience by joining us all in the Next Level community. The Next Level community was built for loan officers like you who want to do these three things. Collaborate with other like-minded mortgage professionals, accelerate turning their experience into expertise, and for those who want to level up their business. You can learn more about the Next Level community by going to becomenl.com.